Expeditions Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Inner Expeditions Podcast. This episode is part of Season 2, Episode 3. Um, I'm of course your host, Aaron Harvey. How are you all going? Welcome back. This episode's a really good one because it's actually one of the first ones I've recorded over the airwaves um, with a remote guest named Pablo Miller, who's a great guy, and he's setting out to run 5Ks every day for 365 days. I think it might go a bit longer than that, though. He's doing really well. One thing I love about Pablo is his positivity uh, towards this t- this goal um, as it's part of a sort of journey for him um, to get fit and to regain uh, and improve his life, which is really awesome, and I hope you pick up on that. Um, one thing you might notice with the episodes, maybe just a little bit of cross-talk, obviously being over the airwaves and not seeing someone in person, um, the conversation can kind of cross over a little bit, but it's all good. Um, the beauty of recording over the airwaves is it's giving me the opportunity to widen my range of guests, which is awesome as I plan to grow the show this year. Um, not heavily edited, that's why I sort of don't really mind that sort of stuff. I hope it doesn't bother you guys too much. I'm really happy with the the quality of the recording, but I don't like to heavily edit episodes and cut out too much conversation as I find it kind of interrupts too much with the authenticity uh, and the integrity of the show. So for that purpose, I like to sort of leave them fairly unedited or, or at least to a minimum, um, just so you can hear the the, uh, the realness of, of the show and, and the conversation. So just one of the things there that you might notice, but um, otherwise it's all pretty good. Like I said, great episode coming up. A lot of, a lot of really good takeaways from this episode, which I'll discuss afterwards post, um, post-production. post um, You can have a listen, but let's get into it. Really good episode. Good. Um, Pablo's a radio broadcaster, so he speaks really well, and it's been good for me to have someone like that on the airwaves too. So uh, without any more, let's have a listen. I think it's really great. I think you'll enjoy it too. Let's go. Okay, we're rolling. Um, Pablo, thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Aaron. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, so briefly in the intro, I sort of discussed what you've been up to, but you are a presenter on Triple M in Karatha. Is that right? Yeah, breakfast radio announcer, Triple M. So I do that Monday to Friday. Uh, yep. so nice early hours, but uh, the good thing about breakfast radio is you finish pretty early as well. So there's some perks there. Yeah, totally. And I think you're also, uh, you're on the council for the town of Carrara as well, is that right? Yeah, I was elected three years ago. Uh, this is my yep. fourth year being on council. Never thought I was going to go into politics. If you had it said that to me, you yep. know, growing up in Bendigo outside of Melbourne, I would have, you know, laughed you out of the room. But here we are, you know, making decisions to hopefully build, you know, the, the city of the north. It's pretty epic and it's come a long way, man. Like I've mm. been to Carrara a little while ago compared to years ago and it's it's really come a long way. So it must be great to be involved uh, in that as well. Yeah, it's a really hands-on sort of experience. You know, I moved to town nine years ago. Uh, we moved, yeah. uh, met my wife here and uh, had some businesses here in town and obviously on the radio and I've got a lovely daughter now and, you know, just wanted to sort of give back and get involved more hands-on in town because yeah. uh, I always thought, you know, Carrara was heading in the right direction uh it wasn't anything i particularly wanted to change it was more like i wanted to get involved i wanted to jump on board and sort of help steer this ship um to make it such a great place and it's just completely transformed you know the town was all fifo uh when i moved here you know everyone was in their fluoro jerseys and you know their fifo gear and now everyone's got kids and families and yeah it's a great place to to have a young family yeah it's refreshing to see that there's towns like that that are giving people a chance to to bring their families up if they want to and and keep the family unit together um and yeah bring the town along with it so it's making it worthwhile you know bringing your family up and uh, and be coming home every night absolutely cool man well let's kick into your journey i mean where I'd, i a friend of mine put me onto you with your running you had started running 5k's every day and the that was the idea that you would do that for a year and that was through the sort of COVID times with things closing down and stuff like that, right? Yeah, it was, it must have been about, I think it was the end of March and it was middle of March and COVID hit and I knew the gyms were going to shut and I'm a kind of all or nothing kind of bloke. You know, I've already started like a fairly intensive sort of 
health journey, if you want, if you want to say it like that, like giving up alcohol, I've given up coffee this year, I've lost about 25 kilo. Uh, and I knew that if, you know, gyms were shut and at that time we didn't know how long it was going to be shut. I was thinking, oh, you know, one month COVID will all be over. I'll run 5k for a month and then life will just go back to normal. Right. And that didn't happen. And I got to a month and then I thought I can probably keep doing this. And then I did, oh, I'll do a hundred days, got to a hundred days. And I thought, can't stop now can i yeah yeah <laughs> and so many mates and stuff message me and text me like you're crazy you gotta injure yourself uh but also really inspired by it and i thought you know i'm not a runner i am definitely not a runner if you saw me you would right. say that bloke doesn't run you know like uh, I'm, I'm i'm a bigger bloke you know um and i'm on that track to to get in a lot healthier and yeah. i just thought i've started this sort of thing that I've just got to keep going. And I just ticked over 300 days uh, the other day of running 5k every day. And it's become just part of my life. I proudly say I'm a runner now. Yeah. Well, that is incredible. I mean, the, the what spurs you on in that whole journey, like I know I never ever set out to be a runner and here I am, you know, years later, just absolutely hooked on it. And it's got that <laughs> power right <laughs> absolutely and it's those little incremental improvements like i started out i think so i've had a couple of knee surgeries and injuries and acls and things like that so probably for about yeah. a year before this i was walking every day i was walking on the treadmill on incline for probably an hour every day just like building up my leg muscles again and rehabbing and then i was supposed to go in and get um some more work done on my knee and i thought you know what i'm just gonna try and start running and just being a bit more active so i was sporadically running and getting back into it and my knee wasn't hurting again and yeah. then march came and covid sort of kicked off and i thought that's it i'm just gonna go for it and i took from 30 i think i was about 35 minutes per 5k at the beginning which is pretty slow and the yeah. best i've done it is just under 23 minutes now um, and i'm trying to crack 20 that's my goal this year right. <laughs> 21 is to get into that 20 minute mark you know and yeah. it, it's it's really cool when you see yourself slowly progressing you know it doesn't happen overnight but it's those little runs every time that it's just such a mind game isn't it 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 totally is when when you find like pushing your boundaries it's you know you kind of want to do it all at once but then you've got to back up the next day right mm. And yeah. you've got to run five k's again, so you have got yeah, to push yeah. it just enough to get a get a gain, but not ruin it. So you're going to be injured or exactly. Out for a few days. So there's probably like two days per week where I go probably as hard as I can, like trying to do PBs or break my you know get faster and yeah, or do some more sprinting in it. And then the other days, like I'll do like probably like two really slow days, uh, and yeah. then the rest kind of normal pace. So I think I found the, the right mix there. And at the beginning, I was only doing treadmill runs. So probably for about the first 50 or 60 days, I only did treadmill. And then I thought, I've got to get outside. And it has yeah. been the best thing running outside. You know, we had Christmas and New Year's and we we're going through all of South WA and through, you know, Bunbury and Margaret River and yelling up in Perth and Scarborough. And it was so cool yeah. running and seeing where you were staying because i wouldn't have seen it otherwise i would have just jumped in the car and drove past all those cool spots where you run past and i love that that connection with where you are you you see you see everything when you're on the ground and you're on yeah. foot and you get it you get a feel for your environment and you take it in it's it's pretty incredible like yeah i was the same as you i started running treadmill running and then on the onto road running and now i'm, I'm like right into my trail running and uh the difference it takes a bit adjusting from a treadmill to road running yeah. right it's the body definitely takes that hit, but then after a while, you're like, man, I could have to go back to a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I have the most cushion shoes ever. Uh, I think right. I, called, I don't know. I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of it, but Saucony yep. or Saucony or something like that. Saucony, yeah, Saucony, yeah. Oh, it's like running on clouds. It is incredible. Yep. And I tried on some pretty average uh, big brand shoes uh, the other day in Perth, and I. Uh, can't ever wear them again i'm stuck with this brand i think for the rest of my life it's beautiful it's like pillows on your feet oh they're a great shoe i remember i started off with them and i love them and i like i'll happily recommend them to people that, that are looking to start running i mean obviously everything's different for each person but i've gone now to more of a like a minimal okay. flat sole shoe with, with with no sort of with no heel rise they're, they're, they're a zero drop shoe 
uh, and it just helped me feel so much more connected. But it's different for everyone, right? Maybe once I lose that last 15 kilos and uh, <laughs> the impact won't be quite as heavy on the joints, uh, I, I might progress. But at the moment, I'm, I'm sticking with them. Oh, definitely. It's funny how you will change something once, you know, like you might get an injury or mm. something which just sort of force you to think, okay, what am I doing that I could change? And I think footwear can be a part of that and running technique and sort of style like that. Is that anything you've sort of looked into or you've come across since you've started this running sort of journey so far? Everyone goes to YouTube, right? Yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> Dr. YouTube. <laughs> so that's kind of what I've done. I've got a couple of mates that are pretty – big into running and I've done yeah. a couple of runs with them and they've really pushed me. And the, the days that I've done my best PBs uh, have been all with them because they're yeah. a lot better skilled at running than I am. And that's somewhere where I definitely want to sort of focus this year is, you yeah, know, run with some proper runners. Cause I'm just, I'm just winging it, man. Like I'm just out there just trying to clock up my five Ks clearing my head. You know, obviously like when COVID yeah. began, a lot of this was just, oh shit you know like the gym was like a complete outlet where you go and you you lift weights and you clear your brain and then COVID hit and the world was like yeah it was pretty it's hard to remember back then but in the start of March and everything like stuff was pretty severe and yeah yeah it was a really tough like mental mental time and I thought yeah I've got to do something to keep that mental health in check and that's why and the benefit of running has been enormous. And people often say, you know, go for a run, clear your head. And I kind of just sort of brush that advice off. Um, yeah. But it is it is such a key part now to my, you know, daily routine and, and daily practice just to, yeah, be on top of my game. Yeah, it's a huge one. I mean, like you say, you're, you're going to the gym, you've obviously started that journey and you've, you're losing weight and you're gaining momentum and getting fit. And then all of a sudden that very thing that's keeping you going is kind of taken away mm. with the gym closing and then you kind of end up onto something almost even better with this, just that pure feeling that you get when you're, when you're smashing out a good run. It's um, pretty epic. Yeah. And I think I've never prioritized health like until the last couple of years. And that's why I was overweight. I was incredibly unhealthy because if I could fit in a gym or if I could fit in a run or if I could fit in a workout, I'd do it, but it was never a priority for like 15 years of my life. Um, yeah. And then now, and having the streak is kind of cool because it keeps you on track as well. It's become a real priority. And often, you know, people yeah. always say, you know, whenever I see people in town, you know, obviously being on the radio, um, people recognize me a fair bit and come up and have a chat and stuff. And they're always, if they see me out in the afternoon, they're like, have you done your run yet? You know, it's like a, <laughs> a running joke, you know, like yeah. they're not, no one's going to let me off the hook anytime soon in Carapa. Yeah. They're keeping you, uh, keeping you honest and, uh, and on track. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an epic story. Uh, and I, I've got no doubt, like you say, the people are asking you how you're going, keeping on track, inspiring. Also, you must get some people coming up and saying, you know, telling you that it's inspiring them or giving you some of their stories to, you know, what it's sort of doing for them. Have you had much of that? Sort yes, of going? so much. Like people that I, you know, you've got lots of people on Instagram and friends and things like that, but yeah. probably people that you don't speak to often have messaged me, asking yeah. me about running, which I is really cool. Like it's connected me with a lot of people that I wouldn't talk to in normal everyday life because they're yeah. not in my circle of world at, anymore. You know, they're more like acquaintances now um, just because of distance. And yeah. that's been really cool. So they've been reaching out asking like, how did I get started? What sort of motivated me to do it? And and some tips as well. And I've had a, cu a couple of friends start running, not every day, but a lot more regular um, three to four times, you know, per week and running every weekend. Um, so that's been really cool to sort of see that sort of snowball effect as well in your life. Absolutely. And when people start to get it, you know, like you've obviously you get in, then you get hooked and you love it and it can really ignite like your own, uh, I guess, passion for it inspires other people. And then you see them get it and then you catch up and you talk again. It's, it's pretty epic. Yeah. And I love running with people. I haven't been able to do it as much as I would have liked. Um, and that's something I want to do more this year is go for runs with mates. Cause it is hard, you know, you want it cause you want to talk as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's obviously not, it's not going to be a PB that you're going to do often, but yeah, I do want to do that more, do some more runs where it's a bit more casual get some friends on board, uh, especially during the winter, you know, here in the, in the Northwest. It's so nice outside running when it's, you know, 
low twenties uh, in the late yeah. afternoon. So I think that's something I'll definitely try to to work on as well. So when when you come north, you'll have to come for a run, Aaron. Yeah, definitely. And the same, like you come down to Exmouth, I'll, uh, I'd love to show you around the trails down here. It's beautiful. And I just, I love that outdoor element and mm. having your feet connected to the earth. It's, it's a pretty special feeling. Um, Cause also you did your trip down South. How did you go? Obviously, like you said before, different areas, different places to go running, <laughs> Any, anything sort of memorable there that you, that you just thought, yeah, this is like, it obviously change your scenery from the same old sort of running yeah. that you get in day to day. Well, Karatha is flat, is what I realised. Yeah. Karatha yeah. is very flat. Uh, we were in Mossman Park for a couple for a week, or is in yelling up for a week. Scarborough, oh my goodness, so many hills. Uh, yeah, right. And that was a huge shock to the system, and also the fact that I didn't do any treadmill runs for for a month. Uh, and usually yeah. I do one or two to just sort of break it up and rest the knees a little bit because yeah, obviously my knees aren't a hundred percent percent after surgery and things and not having yeah. the ability to break it up with a treadmill was pretty hard and the fact that they were mainly all hill runs uh was it yeah. was a big impact but it was also really cool like i did it and what was funny my wife i said to my wife um because i'm a man of streaks i love streaks you know i just love <laughs> doing my wife says I, I could have the same routine every day for the rest of my life you know it's a running joke i ate the same sandwich for seven years you know yeah like, i'm a guy that when I find something I like, I'll stick with it. So I, I joked to my wife when we finished the trip down south, I said, did you ever think I was going to break the streak? And she's like, no, like that's not you. You are going to do it no matter what. So it's cool. It, you know, I'm the, just that kind of guy that when I decide I'm going to do something, I just do it um, and nothing sort of gets in, in the way. And yeah. even though it was like really hard, some of those runs and it was hard, you know, you're on holiday, you catching up with mates you're trying to fit in your know, social life we've got a little one as well um it was really cool as well just to yeah run different places catch up with a few friends run different tracks and yeah different scenery is always nice and just yeah seeing where you're staying i think was a big benefit as well because usually you stay somewhere you don't even really walk around the block that much to sort of see yeah where you're staying and that, that was a huge benefit just to find little pockets of places that i was like oh that's cool it's just around the corner i had no idea it's like a little bonus, uh, like a cherry on top. It's like if I wasn't doing this, I'd, I never would have yeah. seen or, or had that experience. So it's like a total little bonus. on But I'm glad I'm out of the hills. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, like hills like once a week or twice a week maybe. Yeah, that's yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah, if the downhills get me. I know I'm, oh. the downhills and uh, the, the quads start burning. My knees start to sort of hurt. So I know Absolutely. it's time. Horrible. Yeah, back it off. It was perfect uh, sort of segue into it then because uh, the next sort of thing I was going to speak was about is finding how do you go fitting it in? Like do you have your mm. your schedule? I mean, you've got a family life, you've got work, you've got, you know, you're on the council. Um, I no doubt there's some days where you just got to try and squeeze it in whenever you can, but you, you know, have also times where you know you can sort of go first thing or outside of all of those um, sort of times. Yeah, so I, it's one of the first things I ask my wife in the morning is like, what have we got on tonight? What have you yeah. got this afternoon? So I can sort of base the run around everything because I don't generally run in the morning unless it's weekends just because I'm getting into work about 4.30 in the morning. I'm, to be honest, I'm not going to run at 3 a.m. That's just taking yeah. a little bit too extreme for me. Um, <laughs> so it's either if I'm doing a treadmill run, I'll just do it straight away when I get home from work, which is about midday. Um, and that's an easy one because my daughter will have lunch. She'll have a bit of a chill uh, watch yeah. some TV and I can have a quick run on the treaty. Uh, otherwise, if I know that there's sort of nothing in the evening, I'll sort of do it just as she's jumping in the shower and yeah. I'll sort of prep dinner, go for the run. And by the time I'm back, um, now that I'm quicker, uh, dinner's on the table and yeah, the little ones out of the shower and everything and, and we're good to, good to go. I have a quick cold shower and then straight into dinner, which is nice. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah, I know exactly what it's like. And um for me, you know, you kind of get hooked up there for a while. I, mean, I wasn't sort of pushing any streaks or anything like that, but it was just running every day. And they can kind of tell, like my wife can kind of tell sometimes I really sort of need to go. And she's like, just, you need to go put your shoes up and go outside. Because uh, they, can't, they can't bear me when, you know, it's, it is like meditation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, it, I think now that I've I've changed my mentality that, you know, we're, like me and my wife – uh, we used to have a couple of businesses as well. We had two businesses uh, here in town. Our life was so full yeah. for a period of time. Then we threw a, 
a baby in the mix, we ended up shutting down those businesses and because our life was a mess, you know, like there was, we were eating junk food. We were working 16 hours a day. We were dragging our little daughter around everywhere when she was just a baby. We weren't seeing each other. Like it was a living nightmare, honestly. Like, and and it's, I've, I've spoken about this a few times on different, different sort of platforms and stuff. And the reaction's always like really surprised people like, but everything seemed successful, you know, like the, yeah. the businesses were going great externally. Like we won some awards. We went to the state awards with our business and stuff. So exter- externally, everything looked like a real success. And then on the inside, shit was just crumbling apart. Like we, yeah. it was horrible. Um, mm-hmm. So now like having, there's so much more space in our lives that it's it'd be so unjust to have gone through a huge period in our, our life, which is like hell, you know, like it was really, really tough and, you know, yeah. everyone bears their own, own cross. Um, so it's all subjective, but it was such a horrible period in our life that then if I didn't, it'd be a real injustice, I think to myself, if I didn't prioritize health and getting on track when I neglected it for such a huge, huge time. And it'd be such just, so such a bad example for my daughter as well, you know, cause the, she's in that formative age now of being four. To, so if I can set yeah. those good examples for her that, you know, you look after yourself and you take care of yourself and you've got to love yourself more and you have to prioritize yourself and your family the most. Yeah. yeah I just think I'd, I'd be really ashamed of if, of myself and a, and a parental role if, if I didn't exemplify those things. And I, I love it when she asks me, she always says like often at the end of the day, she's like, if she hasn't seen me go to, for the run, she goes, dad, did you do your run today? I love it. It's just such a good question to get from her every day. Yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. I mean, I, I feel like we've sort of got a very similar past and, you know, with weight loss and and running and, and a stressful lifestyle and then all of a sudden things just sort of seem to change. And mm. for me, I kind of felt like it was all happening at once for the right reasons and everything was just pointing in the same direction for me where it was just personal improvement, you know, improving your lifestyle and, and setting that example it, it, I just can't believe how it all just seemed to like it was all sort of meant to happen you know and it was mm. all heading in the same direction and one thing just has a flow-on effect to something else that's just so great and yeah that improvement from wanting to better yourself and and, and better your lifestyle it's it's pretty um it's hard to describe but I, I know exactly what you mean yeah and I think if you don't go through that tough period as well like I always we always joke like would have we realized this anyway? And yeah. my answer to myself is probably not, you know, <laughs> like I would have just tracked on for the next, you know, 10 years, slogging it out, working 16 hours a day, being unhealthy, not prioritizing myself. My relationships would have been terrible. I probably yeah. wouldn't have had the connection I have with my daughter that I do now. Like I'm really, really blessed that like I finished work at about midday and I get the, she's, she starts um, full-time school this year, but I've had that yeah. whole afternoon with her every single day. And it's awesome. And all the weekends. And if we hadn't have made those tough decisions to shut the businesses and prioritize, you know, money and, you know, being successful on the outside, um, yeah. would have just lost what is the most valuable thing of all, which is, you know, the connection with um, your family and yourself. Yeah. I hear that hundred uh, percent. And like you say, is, is, um, is, is putting your health in the, in the forefront when you, you probably didn't before. And by doing that, once you make that change and as hard as it seems, once you make that jump over, it's like, man, how could I not? It's, yes. It, it just, it becomes so easy to just think, okay, I, I could never go back to the way that I was because um, it's like you're seeing things differently. And you, well, it has you, that knock on effect, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, like I think sleep yeah. is the next sort of thing I need. I really do need to sort of prioritize. And I think, yeah, probably everyone needs to sleep more. Um, yeah. Cause that obviously just has such a huge impact on your life. You know, like you don't sleep good. You wake up feeling crap. You're more likely to not exercise. You're more likely to eat bad. You're more likely to be, you know, grumpy with your loved ones. Um, yep. And so all those negative things, you just do that over and over. We just make such bad choices. And that's like the treadmill I was on, you know, like I wasn't on a yep. literal treadmill. I was on that life treadmill. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. Those, yeah. Yeah, tough decisions. And it just spirals and it spirals really e- easily. And yeah, like no one sort of, I felt really pinpointed that, that was something that should change or could change it. Like, I think it just has to, you have to go through that own journey yourself to realize, ah, like it doesn't have to be like this. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I, if I say, if I was to go back 
five years or six years and have this conversation with myself. You know, I was probably 110 kilos, you know, FIFO workout, drank a lot. I mean, I, I'm sure most of the people who have listened to the podcast know my story, but if I could go back six years ago and say, hey, look, you know, this is what you need to do, that I wouldn't have listened because you have to walk those steps to work totally. it out for yourself, right? Totally. <laughs> totally. If I had have said, one, I'm growing my hair, so I'm trying to look like the next Russell Brand. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've given up alcohol. I've given up coffee this year. It's just, it's like a completely different person. And yep. yeah, you, you you would you just couldn't believe yourself, could you? And um, yeah. yeah, well, that's where we are now. It's cool. <laughs> and you got your friends to keep you real. Like same, I've, I've, I'm not drinking this year. I, I wasn't, a, I've, I've gone into not drinking as much. Like I don't drink a lot. This year I've decided to not drink at all. You know, I've gone plant-based. I run all the time. And my friends are just like, man, like, what's what's the deal? Where's 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 the old as? Like the fun as, you know? And it's hard to explain, you know. I said, look, I know I'm not that guy anymore, and I probably don't get invited to as many barbecues. But if, it's hard to explain to people, like, this is this is I'm, I'm loving what I'm doing, and I have to continue um, the, the way that I'm going. But yeah, it's mm. really hard to explain to people sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think, yeah, you know, the alcohol is such a big one, just because it's so ingrained in all in our whole life you know like yeah. every social we just wrote especially in australia we just everything a lot of stuff revolves around food and and, and alcohol um yeah. and then when you stop drinking or sort of take a break and anyone that's sort of taking a break sort of realizes it's like how obsessed as a society we are with alcohol and i think that's been a big eye opener for me and lots of people have asked me you know because it ticked over for one year at the start of yeah. this year and people are like oh you're back on the you're back on the back on the boots and i was kind of like no, nah, I'm, I'm good. Um, I'm not I'm saying I'll good. never drink again. I'm not saying yep. that, but I've had no, and I had, I had my 36th birthday like the other week and didn't drink, like just made no impact, has made no impact um, or no desire to have alcohol. Um, and yeah, I think once you just sort of step back from it and just sort of see it for what it is. I think it makes a big impact as well. And you realize that you can go to things and just drink soda water, kombucha, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. sparkling <laughs> water fan. Uh, you can just drink that. And it's fine. It's funny. You end up picking up a bit of a placebo effect anyway. Yeah. Well, you know, like you said, it, it's hard for like catching up with the people. It's like almost like yeah. some people it's like without that, it's like, you can't, we can't, we can still hang out. Right. Like, even though we're not having a beer, like, but yeah. some people's like, no, it was like catching up goes hand in hand with you know having a couple of coldies so absolutely yeah my whole social life like through my i had a really bad <clears throat> relationship with alcohol and like my whole 20s you know i worked in bars and everything and i traveled overseas yeah. and it was awesome like i wouldn't change it for anything but it was such a bad relationship with alcohol like that is the only way i associated and basically made friends was through heavily drinking like to blackout yeah. phases yeah. um and yeah i wouldn't change that now because it's obviously taught taught me like yeah where, where i am now and um, there's lessons there yeah yeah there's lessons there yeah for sure and yeah not gonna lie there were some awesome experiences in there too it's, it's a lot of fun yeah absolutely but, but then you, it's but nice to know that you can, but you can i uh, want some people that you've sort of met on those terms it's like hey you know we can kind of be friends with, without that like the, yeah. the whole relationship wasn't just based on good times and partying like it you can get to know your like people on a deeper level on the as yeah, yeah, in other in other ways. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got no doubt when you started, like you said, it was just a short term sort of thing, and you could sort of see how long it lasted. And obviously, as COVID has progressed, you know, you've realised that this is going to keep going, and you've set that that sort of that goal to keep going. How did you go once, like when you thought, oh, okay, I'm going to have a real crack at this? Like, did it get tough? And you think, okay, like I've got, you know this is a lot bigger sort of than what I thought or, you know, when you sort of realise you're going to keep going, did it sort of seem quite daunting at any stages or when you had to push through or was it just, just kept rolling and enjoying I've been it? pretty lucky that, one, I haven't been injured and, two, yeah. I haven't really been sick. I've had a couple of days where I haven't felt 100% and a mild cold and I've just done it. Like they were tough days, to be honest, to, to do a yeah. run on. Um, but I just went incredibly slow. I wasn't breaking any world records those days. Yeah. But other than that, there's probably only been three days where mentally I was like, oh, do I really want to do this? But it's been very fleeting where it's just been like, it's crossed my mind, do I want to do this? And then straight away I'm like, 
yeah, I want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I do sort of wake up every day thinking about running as well, like planning the day, like when I'm going to run. So it's on my mind straight away when I wake up. Um, yeah. And that's why I love the weekends because I knock it out straight away. It's not sort of hanging over my head or anything. I just knock it out straight away on the weekend to get it done and dusted. Um, yeah, sure. And that's what was nice about being on holiday as well. It's like I could do a lot more morning runs. Um, but no, it's just become, you know, like I more saw it as just taking one day at a time. And if I wake up each day and just want to do it, cause I think 5k is, is a sweet spot too, cause it's not too small where it's not taxing, but it's not too big that you really struggle to recover the next day. I, I just find it's right in the sweet spot. Like I've done a couple of 10k, uh, fun runs and 7k charity runs and things like that and i've often woken up the next day really sore or stiff um yeah you know, city to surf and things like that with like 12k 5k seems to be the kind of sweet spot especially when you pace it out 24 hours in advance those days sometimes where i do a night like tonight i'm going to do a night and then do a yeah. morning the next day that's tough um but usually when you got the whole 24 hours in between usually pretty good yeah and it's it's it, like you say it sounds like you're understanding your body and you know like not to push it and, and if you're going to have that short interval is, is have a cruisy one tonight and then and then a, an easy one tomorrow just to, yeah, let yourself recover and not sort of stress your body out. Well, now much. that I'm a runner, I'm investing in all the gadgets, right? So, yeah, so you've got a Garmin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got one of those guns that I, I'm using and uh, when I was in uh, the Cap City as well, I tried out the Normatec. Oh, yeah, yeah, pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to convince the wife that it'd be beneficial for her as well. And then potentially we could buy it on the joint account. Yeah, totally you know? justified. yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. And did, yeah. And how did you find though? I've got a friend who's got a, he's got like a, um, a rehab sort of gym. He's starting up down in Fremantle. He's just bought a pair of them and he reckons it's, they're fantastic. Yeah. It, the, it's, the inflatable compression pants they put on you, yeah, right? Yeah. They were really cool. I had no idea what it was going to feel like and it feels like nothing that you kind of imagine it was going to feel like. I thought it'd be more massagey, but it's a lot more sort of pulsating. It kind of feels like, you know, when you get in your blood taken, not blood taken, when you get in your blood um, pressurized. Yep. Uh, and the thing goes around your arm, it sort of pumps. It, it kind of feels a little bit like like that, but a lot, a not, a lot nicer feeling and okay. it goes up and down your legs. And then at the end, you feel really nice. Like all the lactic acid, I'm pretty sure, gets moved out. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. So if my so wife totally is listening, definitely worth the money. Yeah, great. Yeah. I haven't tried it yet, but I think next time I go down to free, I'm going to have to go and see Matt and, uh, and get him to sort me out and get a session <laughs> yeah. on this. Definitely check him out. Um, I'm just thinking of what other stuff. Um, so I guess for you moving forward, you're going to see the year out, do your – do your one year, your 365 days, what sort of plans have you got after that? As far as running goes, are you going to just keep going with the streak or do you think you'll, you'll look at more distance running or improve your 5K pace or how do you think you'll go? Yeah, a little bit of everything. I think I'll definitely I, – I do not want to break the streak, to be honest. So I think it's something that hopefully I can keep doing for, you know, get up to the thousands and things like that. There's been some um, guys in America, you know, crank out, 6,000 days in a row, pretty incredible stuff. Yeah. Um, don't know if I'll get to that level, but I wouldn't mind getting to 1,000. It would be pretty remarkable. And like to think that I'm already kind of like a third of the way there is kind of mind-blowing as well. Uh, so I want to do that. I definitely want to improve the my pace and just be a lot more consistent. I find like the first couple of Ks, I'm flying out the gate, four, yeah. third K, I hit the wall. Not hit the wall, but yeah, I really drop off. And then the last K, I pick up the pace again. So I just want to be a lot more consistent uh, get into the 20k, um, barrier, like break that 20, 20 minute barrier, sorry. And then also potentially, you know, want to do a half marathon at some point this year when those things sort of kick back up. And then, you know, eventually I definitely want to do a marathon at at some point now that, you know, you kind of have to, don't you? Like once you start start running, you've got it. Like that's the, the next mountaintop. Yeah, I, I I did my I did a half marathon I think maybe like two or two and a half years ago I did my first half marathon and there was just so much I didn't know mm. like getting my nutrition right like that helped so much doctor like really dialing in on my nutrition and then after the half marathon I kind of fell into the whole ultra marathon thing so 
I did an ultra in May. I did an ultra marathon, my first one, uh, really slow um, and got most of it done. Didn't get as as many Ks as I had planned, but I kind of went in quite short notice and really probably not as quite as prepared as what I would like to have been, but it was just one of those things I I felt like having a crack at. But, um, yeah, look, definitely I found getting running technique and form and that down. Mm. Uh, I read a book, uh, Born to Run is a really great book if no one's sort of one. Yep, definitely check that out. That was a, a real game changer with my getting my running technique and form down. It helped a lot um, for recovery and and, yeah, and getting your paces and stuff like that right. Yeah, I think that's sort of key as well, as, as you mentioned. I definitely need, need to work on a bit more form because I'm just completely winging it. Uh, but when I did that 12K, uh, yeah. I remember finishing it and I felt awesome and I thought I could – and that's why I thought I can easily do a half marathon because I was just like, I could do that again. I was yeah. – and I was that motivated. I was like, I can do a half marathon there. I knew it as soon as I hit that 12K. And I know it's like a long jump to double it. Um, yep. But just mentally, I just felt like I can probably do a half marathon. So that's kind of like the next thing that I need to achieve. And then yeah, from there, get a bit more serious because obviously doing a marathon, it's not something you can sort of wake up and uh, just have a crack at. <laughs> something I no, well, need to trade out <laughs> a bit more. But yeah, you get that nutrition right. I mean, like I did my first half marathon, I, I did it on basically an empty stomach because I had that 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 mindset still of trying to lose weight, mm. uh, you know, and still trying to push a bit of performance. And you can't really do both. I mean, if you if you get a really good calorie deficit and you're tracking all your calories and all that stuff, you can. But for me, I was like, I still want to lose weight, but I'm running on an empty stomach, and I was wondering why I was like bonking out, and you know, I, I finished. <laughs> You know, I got to like 18 Ks in and I just had nothing. My legs were dead. I was turning them over. I don't know how. And when I look back, it was because I had no fuel. So mm. nutrition was such a big one for performance and recovery as well. It was it was really uh, super. Well, it's interesting, hey, because I, 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 we definitely do sound like we've got a very similar <laughs> sort of story because yeah. I'm at the, the same sort of path. You know, I'll often do, you know, and, and doing a 5K compared to half marathons, nothing. You can easily do it on yeah, no food, but I'm in that mentality as well as, you know, like I'm cutting calories and being on quite a strict, not over Christmas, being on quite a, you know, strict sort of regime because, you know, I've got more weight to lose from where I've come from. And it's that, you know, it's going to come a time where you've got to do it more for performance. Um, And it is that balancing act, isn't it? Trying to work out, you know, you've got to fuel your body as, as well, especially when you're doing, you know, high intensity and, you know, burning a lot of calories, like doing a big run like that. Yeah, and when you when you're kind of when you got your calories and nutrition right, you'll lose weight anyway because you're mm. fueling you're fueling what needs to be fueled, which has to burn the calories off. So it's um it's kind of crazy to to think of it that way, but it it's it's so effective and you know it helps your recovery. I mean, I yeah, I think one week I did a fifteen k run and I really struggled uh, because I didn't have any nutrition down there. Once I sort of decided I was going to run this ultra, I got in touch with a friend who's a nutritionist and she just worded me up and I think the, a week later I did a 25k run on a Saturday morning backed it up with an hour run straight away on Monday just through proper fueling I just couldn't it was like a, awesome. like a light like a light bulb moment you know yeah yeah that's cool mm, but pretty epic and yeah, and yeah the other thing I, I think I looked at they talk about like an 80 the 80 20 rule which is where mm. I think 80 percent of your runs are you know a lot slower in that aerobic zone and then you, you work on your 20 percent being faster and, and shorter but more intense sort of thing so yeah so i've started doing that a little bit for the last k often yep. you know do a sprint then like a slow jog then a sprint slow jog yep. and i found that really good to sort of um one get through that last kilometer but then also you know push your pace as well just to find out where my limits are from from running as fast as i can yeah, and it keeps your body guessing too because, yeah. um, you know, you, your body gets used to that same level pace all the time. And I found out oh, there was a real po- period there where I was pushing my performance really well, but I wasn't losing any weight because my body was just getting used to it. So I started adding at interval running and, you know, through pushing the performance probably a bit too much, I got injured. And then, but then on the other side of the injury, I learned so much because I didn't want it to happen again. And that's where I actually really started learning a lot more about my running so there's mm. always a positive you know like a silver lining out of anything absolutely epic man yeah well um epic episode thank you so much for your time i think we're good we're going to probably start wrapping it up so um i just want to say thanks again for coming on obviously you've been up since what like four o'clock this morning or something like that <laughs> <Who's kidding? laughs> 
Yeah, it's it's. But yeah, without I appreciate you as well. Without coffee, <laughs> I should get. I know, right? <laughs> That's the hardest one I've been finding. Is the hardest one is that last thing is coffee. But I'm like, okay, I'll just get the alcohol this year, and I'll just one step at a time. So. Well, I've put off coffee for many years. This is like I was drinking seven or eight cups of coffee at one stage in my yeah. el- my uh, most unhealthy part of my life, and I cut it down to two, then I cut it down to one, and then eventually yeah. I said, I, it's just got to go. Uh, but I love coffee. I, I've n- nothing against it, but just for me, it was giving me jitters. It was that horrible feeling. And I was just relying on it way too much. But it's yeah, been man. horrendous headaches uh, for the first couple of weeks of the of the new year. I got I got onto uh, matcha. I don't know if you heard of like matcha tea. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I got off coffee for a while there, I got onto the matcha tea, and it's it's kind of like tea leaves, but they grind them up, so you drink like the whole green goodness instead of sort of steeping it. And mm. it's got it's still got that that sort of natural caffeine, but instead of the spike, it kind of tapers off, and it really sort of helped me get off coffee and get rid of those morning headaches. And then you can kind of peter off it all together. So that was another really good one as well. Yeah, it's something that's really symbolic to have that nice cup of coffee in the morning you know like hot cup of coffee it's really hard to i'm drinking hot chocolate at the moment sugar okay. free yeah <laughs> uh because uh, it's just there's something about just having that nice cup um especially being a radio announcer being in you know the studio early and just gravitate yeah. always to having that hot milky goodness in my in my hand every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right well yeah when you get up early enough you need that sort of kick yeah with, uh, it's incredible like on on so many levels man like congratulations you're just kicking but it's uh you know we're giving up the alcohol the running streak it's incredible how you just keep pushing yourself forward and you you kind of just can't stop i I just feel like i'm relating on so many levels um with you you while we're talking over here this is uh it's so great and um just well done on all your accomplishments so far and i'm so excited to see um how much further you go and definitely, you know, look at getting you on uh, down the track to see how things went and where you are in your journey and, and where you're looking at going. So I definitely want to get you back on the show. At some oh, stage. cheers, man. Well, uh, much appreciated. And when we're in Exmouth, we'll catch up for a kombucha. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, we'll take yeah. some runs up here. Yeah, that's right. I've been eating the coconut water as well lately, so that's good. It's got some good electrolytes in it. <laughs> No, I appreciate it. Thanks for the kind words. Yeah, thanks for you, and thanks for your family for uh, for giving you the extra time to uh, stay uh, late and uh, and chat to me as well. No problem. Thanks, man. Another great episode down. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoyed uh, having Pablo on the show, and one thing that I really enjoyed and got out it was just that positivity that is sparked when you start doing something you know you never you never know when you start off to do something where it's going to take you and it just breeds a flow-on effect to do greater things and to want more from yourself which I can definitely relate to it seems like we've sort of aligned a lot with um with previous experiences and that positivity and and wanting more from yourself and uh, to make yourself better as a person just seems to be a real common theme with um, not only runners, well, definitely runners for sure, but with anyone that sort of wants to set those goals to improve yourself physically um, and mentally, even though you might not think that at the time, they sort of seem to go hand in hand. And as your health and fitness improves, that that sort of mental um, you know, capacity can improve as well and your happiness overall, which a lot of the time is unexpected, but it's definitely something that, that happens and it goes on to create better things and like as we spoke about before where you you don't realize that the smaller steps can really lead on to on to greater things so um a couple of things i really got out of it were like when people talk about running and they they start off on their journeys and that whatever they do they consider themselves not not a runner or they feel like they're out of place in a gym where there's other fit people in there um which i think you know if you're if you're out there running and you're putting it in day in day out for whatever reason man if you're running then then you're a runner and it's that perception of thinking you know comparing yourself to people where you feel like you're not a part of that group or that whatever that sort of society or group is that you're trying to achieve to be like I think that if you're out there and you're doing it it doesn't matter if you're a beginner it's your first day or you know you're an experienced um, person in that sport I think if you're out there and you're having a go then then you're a runner or you're you know you're a, a personal trainer or um anything to do with that sort of stuff if you're having a go then you're definitely part of that of that group 
So I think that's something you should get out of that. Uh, one, one thing that I really found interesting was when Pablo was talking about, you know, he was enjoying a lot of success and had businesses running and he was flat out and really busy and people had that perception of him looking like that they were successful so they should be happy but actually it was almost the other way around where he wasn't anywhere near as happy as what he might have been perceived um, and just letting go of that persona and that connection with yourself that you kind of generally to tend to find is it just letting go of that and just making yourself happy and simplifying your life and it's a, it's all part of that learning journey, which, like I said before, you've got no idea what's out there when you start, but it's one of those things that you kind of definitely seems to be a common thread that you um, you come across as you look to um, not only improve your, yourself and your personal, uh, as, yeah, and your personal life, but um, I think that's it just goes back to the importance of putting yourself first, and that has a flow-on effect. I think you're more capable of being loving and a better, not only a better person, but a better father husband um better in your job just better all in all i think if you learn to put yourself first then that has a flow and effect and then you can go and share that with other people it's very hard to be there for other people and to to consider yourself as to being that person for people when you when you haven't got it quite right yourself um and finding that time to exercise when he spoke that he didn't have time and health and fitness wasn't a priority that can change once you do make it a priority and, you, and you're putting yourself first, it then gives you that inner confidence, I think, to carry it forwards uh, and to be that for other people. So, so much of an episode that I that I got a lot out of and I hope you guys did too and really enjoyed it. Um, and thanks again for Pablo for coming in. Some really great lessons in there, man. Thank you so much. So, also with him being a broadcaster, really um, cool to have someone on that speaks really well. And hopefully I can learn something from that as I look at improving on my broadcasting skills too. So, Babs, if you're having a listen and you've enjoyed it, man, uh, don't be shy of, um, of sending some of your thoughts my way and uh, maybe give me a few lessons on how to improve my microphone skills as well. That would be greatly appreciated. But that's about it for me for this week, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed it again. Really great to have you back um, on the podcast and listening. It's really um, appreciated to know that I've got uh, starting to build up a good little base of listeners so make sure I want to make you all feel that you're appreciated for listening in and wherever you are tuning in I hope that you're uh, that you're going well but until next time um, I've got some great guests on again next week so please make sure you tune in I'll put everything out on the posts Uh, and don't forget to if you're liking the episodes please make sure you share it with your friends share it on the socials uh, and share the instagram page at the inner expeditions podcast Uh, also don't forget we are on patreon now so if you do want to help out and contribute to the show you can at patreon.com forward slash inner expeditions otherwise that's it from me thanks again guys hope whatever you're doing this week it's great and you're getting something out of it until then i'll speak to you next time